Hello everybody, it's Caleb again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about this little camera that's been mounted to my machine for close to a year now. So the whole idea with this camera was that it would be a very quick and fairly accurate way of zeroing out the XY coordinates on a piece of material. Of course, before we can expect any sort of accuracy out of it, we're going to need a couple of things. Chief among these are a few code snippets that will help us integrate the video feed into Linux CNC, as well as set up a button that will take into account the offset of the camera position in relation to the spindle position. Let's start by getting the video from the camera embedded into Linux CNC. One of the most dead simple ways is to use a program called mPlayer. It's easy enough to install using Synaptic Packet Manager. Once mPlayer is installed, you only actually need two lines of code to embed the webcam's video into a Linux CNC tab. The first line is fairly self-explanatory, but the second line is initializing mPlayer with a few variables. There are a couple different ways to get around the fact that mPlayer won't let you simply draw a vertical and horizontal line over the video feed to form crosshairs. I've of course opted for the simplest method presented to me by a Linux CNC forum user, which is to set up the embedded instance of mPlayer to overlay two rectangles on the video feed. While what we've just went over is technically good enough to get going, I also want some way to very quickly touch off the X and Y axis at the same time, while also accounting for the camera's X and Y offset to the spindle. To accomplish this task in my case, I had to edit three existing config files and create one new one. First off, I created a file called 101.ngc. This is an important file because it contains the instructions that tells the machine what I want to do when I press the touch off XY button. The first and last two lines of the file are fairly unremarkable. They're just syntax that the software requires. However, it is important that the number following the O on lines 2 and 9 are the same as the file name. Lines 4 and 6 are G-code that will set the X and Y zero as well as automatically taking into account the given offset value. Once we've determined the offset values, we'll enter them into this file. Line 8 is yet more G-code. Its purpose is to provide a physical sanity check so that we know where the machine thinks the X0, Y0 is. The next step is to open your .ini file and add the line HALUI equals HALUI under the HAL section. You'll then need to make a HALUI section if you don't have one already. And to add the line MIDI underscore command equals O101 call. Then open custompanel.xml and add some code similar to what I have highlighted here. I'll put a link in the description to my build log so that you can copy paste it. Now if you don't have this file, the easiest way to set it up is to use the stepconf wizard. Finally, open custom postgui.hal and add a line similar to the one highlighted here. If everything goes right, which it never does the first time, then you should have a button that will automate the zeroing of the xy axis. So now that we got that sorted, let's figure out those two offset values. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to run the spindle over here. We're going to peck the material with this V-bit that's in the spindle right now. Once we peck it, we'll um, zero out the XY coordinates, and then we will uh, move it over so that the camera is pointing at the little divot that we drilled into the material. And hopefully that will give us a pretty close approximation to where the center of the spindle to the offset of the camera is. So here we go. All right, so we got that done, so now we're just going to uh, do a touch off on the X and on the Y. And what that will do is it'll center, it will give us uh, zeros on these so that when we move in the camera view, uh, we should be able to uh, just see what we need to see and then we'll be able to hopefully give our offset. So we're going to use the soft uh, limit on the z-axis to give us uh, our kind of like fixed point. That looks pretty centered to me. Should be pretty close. So now we'll go back over here and we see that we have these two numbers right here. 44 uh, 0.686 millimeters and 51 point. All right, so that, that should be good enough to start off with. So we'll grab those numbers and we'll put them into the file. We'll see how test number two goes from there. All right, so we've got our file opened up and as you can see, 
my first attempt before doing the recording is pretty close to this, so that's pretty good. So we're going to just change these numbers to the ones we picked up here. And so we're going to go with 69 and 54, and we're going to save this. Save current file. All right, so that should be saved now. So I'm just going to uh, drop this down for right now and leave it right there. So we're still fired up in the same coordinate system. I think what I want to do is rehome the system. Alright, so now we're going to switch back to our camera mode and we're going to aim back at that divot and we're going to see how close we can hit it. Alright, so now that we're pointed out there, we're obviously not pointed at the center of where the, the actual spindle is. We're pointed right underneath the camera. So that means that we need an offset, which is exactly what we were working on finding. So we can now use this uh, touch off X and Y button that I've programmed into the system. And it will do a sanity check, which will essentially uh, capture the information we wanted. So it's now set for that. So that should be now zero, zero, which it is. So we're sitting at zero, zero. And as you can see, the zero, zero is where the spindle is pointing right now, not where the camera is currently. Basically, I think what we need to do is go down and see where we land. So you can see we are, we're pretty darn close. We're not spot on, I don't think, but we're, we're really close. So I'm going to fire up the spindle and, and see what we can do. Yeah, you can't even tell that there's any difference there. That looks pretty good. All right, as you can see, we've milled out a little bit of a, a 90 degree angle there. So we're going to point the, the crosshairs of the camera right there. And then we're going to just drop it down and see where we where we get. And we're going to try that a couple times and see how the repeatability of that operation goes. So as you can see, we've rehomed the system again. Switch back to the camera. That looks pretty close to me. Yeah. About as good as I'm gonna say we can get. So I'm gonna hit the button. All right. So let's see what we get. Nope. Pretty much bang on. So that's nice. As you can see right there, it's pretty much right on. Pretty close, anyways. All right, so what we're going to do now is try that again and see what we can do. So I'm going to shut down the software. So that will basically break any uh, saved data that we might have had that might be helping it along. So this is more or less just like we were firing up and starting a job uh, new. So we got to home again. All right, so we're homed again. And now we're going to just run back over to that spot. Okay, so that looks about right to me on these two points. You can see we're right in that little divot right there. Bang on, so that's making me pretty happy. Back to that. Button. All right, so let's turn on the spindle and move it down. So as you can see, it's it's pretty much bang on. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to point it right at the corner here and see what we can do there, since that's more or less what we're actually trying to do is find the corner of a piece of material so we can work off of it real quick. All right, so we're back finally, and I'm moving right towards that corner. We're going to hopefully see if we can uh, hit it pretty much right on. All right. Hopefully see if it works. Take it down. So hopefully you can see a little bit better. Uh, but it's right on there. Wow, it's really quite close. So we're going to fire it up and just see where it marks. All right, so as you can see, it's like right on there. You, it just, I, I don't know exactly how good it, it shows it in the footage, but its it just clipped the corner there really nice. You know, I don't think it's super accurate, but it's pretty much as accurate as you could want. All right, so obviously that's more or less a very quick 
rundown of what its capabilities are and how I got it a little bit calibrated and tested it. I think it's going to be one of those things where I have to do a lot more testing before I'm really happy with the results and really know just how accurate I can expect it to repeatedly get to. But it's good. It's not bad. The one thing that I will say, one caveat that I'm having trouble with is this camera. I don't think that this is a good camera to get, mostly because of how it focuses. When I bought it, I thought, hey, it's a microscope. It'll be great that it can zoom in, zoom out, but and you zoom in and zoom out by turning this little knob here. So the problem with it is that the optics are stationary and the, the camera sensor is the part that moves. The entire PCB moves inside this thing and it has a little bit of a threading on the end of the PCB up here that moves with this knob and kind of moves it up and down. The problem with that is anytime you move that knob you end up with a bunch of variants in where it ends up. I think that it would be better to go with something that might be more of a traditional webcam, like a decent Logitech. Other than that, I think that it's a very viable way of setting up your, your job and your work material and everything. And there's some really good advantages for having it on the machine. And yeah, that's basically it. So I hope this was interesting. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe. All those kind of things help me know whether or not this is interesting at all to anybody or helpful. The whole point of doing these videos is to help other people with their CNC builds and uh, help propagate good information. If uh, you see that I've done anything that you're like, hey, that G code or that, you know, something on my programming end or something that I'm doing wrong on the physical side, if you're like, hey, I think you should do this differently because this reason, comment, you know, about it. I love hearing about things that I'm doing wrong because it helps me to get better. Thanks for watching again and bye.